It's the most wonderful time of the year, college football bowl season, baby. And there are 42 bowl and playoff games to keep us entertained for almost three and a half weeks. Starting with Toledo versus Middle Tennessee State and going through the national championship on Monday, January 10th, pick your favorite way to talk or sports memo handicapper and get every college football bowl game they release, including any 5% best bets normally priced at $35 for the low price of $149. As an added bonus, Make sure to download the free Way to Talk College Football Bowl Guide by going to wt.buzz/rm. From everyone at Way to Talk and Sports Memo, good luck this college football bowl season. Hey guys, welcome in and happy, uh, well, what is today now? Well, it's bowl season day. That's what it is. It is just around the corner, and we've got four here today on College Football Daily that we are going to break down. It starts Friday. We've got uh, the Bahamas Bowl, the Cure Bowl, the Boca Raton Bowl, and the New Mexico Bowl. We're going to run through, see if we can't get you uh, a preview and some edges on these games, and we're going to do it. Uh, with three of the finest uh, from the show this year, as Tony Mejia is joining us, as is Brian Leonard, and of course, Dave Koken in the house, here to talk a little college uh, football today. And uh, we'll get into uh, what everyone's got going on. You guys obviously saw the bowl package available right now at wagertalk.com. Great opportunity to hop on board. So let's not uh, waste any time, guys. Let's dive into our very first bowl game here. And we're going to take a look at which one here, Robert. Yeah, Toledo taking on, uh, well, Middle Tennessee State here in the Bahamas Bowl. It opens up uh, Toledo minus nine, even, heck, even double digits, some spots. Total opening of 53. This is going to be on Friday at noon Eastern time kickoff. Tony Mejia. Uh, Middle Tennessee lost Chase Cunningham this year. Actually hanged tough uh, without him, but they're down to their third or fourth string QB here. So what do you think we're going to get from Middle Tennessee State? I mean, I think that they have done a nice job of being, re you know, it's a resurgent program, and they won their elimination game. Uh, they wouldn't have had a postseason had they not beat Florida Atlantic. And it's key to have for programs like that uh, a couple of extra weeks of practice. That said, I think Toledo is the deeper, better team here. Uh, both of these programs have played. And as always, one, one of the things that if you watch uh, the Bahamas Bowl annually, uh, you know that wind is always a factor. It seems to be out of control uh, some years more than others. So uh, a potent running attack will certainly help matters. And I think that definitely favors Toledo. Uh, they've got a dual who really took uh, the mantle. Clearly, Gus Bradley's kid, the longtime, and Bryant Kovac, uh, who's run for 1,274 yards and 18 touchdowns this season. That guy, uh, Jason Candle, ironically, his first ever game was at the Bahamas Bowl, and he won that. And Toledo hasn't won a bowl game since. I think the Rockets reverse course and give uh, Candle a victory here and uh, and finish the season out in style. So I like Toledo. Uh, Ten points, probably a little too much. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think it's Toledo or pass. And then the top play here, due to the wins and due to the fact that both teams are probably going to run the ball, is to get on the low side of the posted total. All right, they're getting on the low side there. What do you think here, uh, Brian Leonard? Do you agree? Is it Toledo a pass for you in this one? Yeah, Tony, hit on the wind. I think it's, uh, as of now, they're projecting 17 mile an hour wind. It's not quite up to the 20 in which you have to take a major look at. We saw that in uh, the NFL games lately. Um, but yeah, you got a Toledo team was just here in 2018. Uh, Middle Tennessee, you mentioned cut on the uh, intro, down to the third string quarterback. That is the concern if you're looking to play Middle Tennessee here. Uh, Toledo's got the better offense. Um, when you take a look at these teams, they were ranked number one in the country in one regard. Uh, Toledo only turned the ball over five times all season long, and Middle Tennessee took away 31 turnovers as the season went on. So. Turnovers could be a key in this game, as it always is when you come down to batting. Tell me who the team is that's going to win the turnover battle. I'll tell you the team who I think is going to cover the spread. Um, Middle Tennessee, as I mentioned, third string uh, quarterback going here. In their favor, Middle Tennessee just won their sixth game to make up six and six. So 
a win here gives them a winning season. I think that's something to look forward to for Middle Tennessee. But as Tony mentioned, um, Toledo's the better team here. Money's come in on Toledo a little bit here, 10, 10 and a half. Normally in these early games, I'm looking to, for, to play on overs and playing underdogs, uh, underdogs on the money line. In fact, uh, that's been a real nice positive going back a long time is getting these early bowl games on the money line with the underdogs. But I don't know if I'll be able to get there in this one. I think Middle Tennessee plus the points is probably the way I'd look at it. Um, and I don't like to play uh, an over in a game that has win situation like this. So slightly in here to Middle Tennessee. I uh, wish they were fully healthy. Not, not uh, in that case. So got to deal with whatever's been dealt to us. And uh, in that case, uh, slightly in here with Middle Tennessee. So there were three and two. One's cutting and went down there. Uh, Dave, do you give uh, any hope here to Middle Tennessee on uh, in this matchup? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, Cunningham is doing okay, uh, but it's not like he's a superstar quarterback. And the two, uh, the, the th Bailey Hockman retired, <laughs> so it came down to Vadiato and uh, Diliello. And Diliello came off the bench and played great in the finale. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a hell of a, really hell of a comeback by Middle Tennessee State against Florida Atlantic. Mm -hmm. They get what I think seventeen in the fourth quarter. Uh, gets them to six and six, gets them to the bowl. I think they're going to be excited about playing here. Maybe more excited than Toledo. Uh, Toledo has improved, clearly has improved since uh, Daquan Finn went in at quarterback. Connor Stanley was not getting it done. Good move by Candle to make the change. And he's a dual threat quarterback. Um, in this bowl, I, I would, I, I think the defense, the defense is what's going to decide it. Uh, because of the fact that it's, it's tough to throw the ball down there and even kicking games can uh, have problems with the wind. I actually think Middle Tennessee's got a little better defense. So I wouldn't be shocked at the upset here. I, I would lean to the Blue Raiders and would lean to the under as well. All right, lean and Blue Raiders leading to the under. All right, let's head over. Let's go to our next uh, bowl game here. And I think it's the Cure Bowl, Robert, if I'm not mistaken here. Yep, one in which we'll head to Orlando to check out Coastal Carolina taking on Northern Illinois. Nine was the opening number, total 63 and a half. This two on Friday, 6 o'clock Eastern time kickoff. And, uh, you know, all eyes are going to be on uh, Grayson McCall here. I would imagine, Brian Leonard, yeah. uh, Dave and I were trying to dig up and see if we uh, any confirmation one way or the other on his status. It does appear that he is going for Coastal Carolina. Do you give them the edge here? You would have to give them the edge there. They've shown all season long that they're a really good team when they're not playing elite competition. And that's the only concern I have for Coastal here is you take a look at the strength of schedule. Uh, Ralph Michaels on the terrific bowl edition he put out for uh, Wager Talk. He's got him at 148th on strength of schedule, Northern Illinois 94. So there is uh, a pretty big strength of schedule differential here. Coastal's been able to beat up on the weaker teams, not so much when they played the better teams on the schedule. So that is the concern. But he, he's an NFL quarterback. He, he can make it to the next level. Uh, Northern Illinois is a team that I made a lot of money on this season, and I see no reason to – to run out and try to bet against them because they've been a moneymaker all season long. I believe they've been an underdog in every game. And they, they made it all the way to the bowl. So that's something very impressive out of Northern Illinois. Uh, Coastal's a team that may have had higher expectations. Uh, they're coming back to the same place they were at last year, I believe, in the bowl game. So uh, Northern, after uh, the season they had last year and the last couple of years, really have been down for them. Uh, they're probably more excited about this game than Coastal is. Uh, Coastal came into the season and the way they started the year, you know, there was a little bit of talk about them possibly making one of the bigger bowl games because uh, of what they had done. Uh, and they became a household name in a lot of cases. But uh, I think from a motivational standpoint, Northern Illinois has the advantage here. But then again, you're going against probably the best quarterback they've seen all season long. So uh, tough for me to make a decision on this game. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, I like to play the dogs in the early games. That'd be the way I'd look here. Uh, Dave, let me come to you with this game. Uh, second uh, second time's a charm, maybe, for uh, Coastal Carolina trying to get their first bowl victory here in this one. What do you think their chances are? Pretty good. Uh, and in the minor bowls, 
I like it when I think I've got a motivational edge with the favorite. And I think there is one here for a variety of reasons. First of all, Coastal Carolina didn't play well at the end of the season. And much of that was due to the fact that McCall was hurt. He's back. And this is a big audition game for Grayson McCall, who's he's going to be in, uh, in the NFL and he can improve his stock uh, with a good performance here. Also, their offensive coordinators been one of the hot names out there. Willie Korn, he's got a chance to move up to a bigger program. Uh, and the fact is they lost this bowl last year. So I, I, I think they'd like to wash that taste out of their mouths. Northern Illinois, Thomas Hammock's done a great job there this year. That team has overachieved in terms of what their preseason expectations were as much as any team in the country. Now, they've had a really good season. And they've done it with a smart game plan. Rocky Lombardi's not a really good quarterback, in, in my opinion. He's a bit erratic. But they have featured the running game. Uh, they do get a key wide receiver back. It looks like Tyrese Ritchie is going to be back for this game, and that will help them as well. But I think Northern Illinois already won the game they really wanted to win. Same season revenge in the conference championship game against Kent State, and they went out there and they did a number in the Golden Flashes. Maybe a little bit satisfied here. I think there's more on the line for Coastal Carolina. I think they are the better team, and I like the Chanticleers to get a good-sized win in this game. All right, good stuff there. Tony Mejia, kind of in your neck of the woods here this uh, battle on Friday. Uh, what do you think? Who do you like in this matchup? Well, I, I think we're going to see points, but it, this is a game that I'll probably stay away from because the first thing Thomas Hammond, the Northern Illinois coach, said is I hope they uh, get their commercials in quickly because this was going to be a brief game. And he's referring to the <laughs> fact that NIU wants to run and Coastal Carolina is a, a top six rushing offense. And, uh, you know, that's where their bread is buttered. I, I think 10 points is a little too much, you know, north of double digits. Uh, I, uh, Coastal Carolina is the brand here. Certainly what Hammond has done is rescue a program. The, he's an alum, too. I remember watching him as a running back yep. when I was uh, in college uh, and he played against UCF. Uh, and he's done. He's one of the rare alums that has really rescued that program and done a really nice job. Uh, but Coastal, probably more talent. Uh, Dave mentioned Richie coming back for NIU. That really helps. And they do have some uh, some solid running backs and and run behind a, a, an experienced line. Uh, Lombardi, not quite the ball handler that Grayson McCall is. McCall comes back from an upper body injury uh, late in the season that was supposed to keep him out multiple weeks and, and actually sets a career high with five touchdown passes immediately. So uh, it looks like he's good to go. He's got Likely and Hiley, who are, who are both really solid receivers. I think we'll see likely playing on Sundays. Um, so maybe points here, but again, like I said at, at the outset, games where uh, the clock is going to be moving quickly kind of scare me off high totals, and this one's up into the 60s. That being said, if we do get chunk yardage, if we get big plays in that run game, um, then you know game circumstances might force uh, a Lombardi to throw more than he wants to, uh, and we, we might see uh, some, some turnovers uh, resort to short field. So my leans in this game are on the over. And just because there's so many points involved, I would take the points with Northern Illinois. All right. Taking the points with Northern Illinois. Oh, points. Did you say, um, Robert, let's, uh, let's take a look at this next ball game. If we could, I bet there are going to be points in the Boca Raton bowl here is app state taking on Western Kentucky two and a half app state. As a favorite here, uh, this one guy is going to be Saturday, 11 a.m., 67 and a half as a total. And uh, Dave, I'll come to you here. Uh, Western Kentucky, just a scoring machine. What do you think they do against this App State defense? Well, they are. Uh, and uh, I, Bailey Zappi's had an amazing year. He has a chance to break Joe Burrow's single season touchdown record here. And I wasn't sure he was going to play, to be honest with you. Uh, but he is going to be out there, and, and that's big. But two of the really important guys in the Western Kentucky offense are not going to be out there. Mitchell Tinsley, who had 80 catches this year, and uh, their best offensive lineman, Mason Brooks, they both are, I guess they're, well, I, let me correct that. They're both going to play. But they're both in the transfer portal. I, I'm not really sure how that works. I, I just, I, it confuses the hell out of me. What I do know is that Beanie Bishop uh, is apparently not going to play. The, the problem, I, I guess what I'm saying, and this is, this is something where 
it's just going to take me out of a lot of bowl games. I don't know who's playing. Mm. And it seems to be impossible to find out. Um, so to me, it just, I, I don't know what to make of Western Kentucky. Appalachian State's the better football team. Um, Corey Sutton's not going to play. He is definitely out. I, I have no idea. Uh, to me, this is just throw it out because I don't know who's going to be on the field for Western Kentucky. I don't know what their concentration is going to be with this in the transfer portal or not in the transfer portal. I'll let somebody else bet this game. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's interesting here. It's a tough spot right now, Tony Mejia, because uh, a lot is going to ride on who the supporting cast is, certainly for Western Kentucky. Uh, how do you stand right now with this game? Well, I'll bet this game, just, just because yeah. Zappi's going to have some time to get his uh, his uh, system in place with whoever steps up, you know, to to fill these air raid voids. Uh, and he he's the key to it all. And so if he's going to play, he's so locked into this system that I trust him to make plays. Uh, and you know, one one key thing on the Appalachian State side is, do can they lock in on defense to see what they're going to keep in front of them, just in order to make zappy make completions instead of big plays and chunk yardage uh to kind of sh to, to shorten this game a little bit uh but i think time of possession is going to favor appalachian state i think appalachian state's run game is more trustworthy uh well, western kentucky doesn't have a run game but it's trustworthy enough to move the football uh to the point where i think they'll have time of possession one two to one and that's still probably not enough uh to keep western kentucky from scoring points and that's really the only thing that interests me in this game, I'm not sure who's going to win. Uh, I, it, it surprised me a little bit to see App State favored. Um, but, you know, what, considering Con Conference USA has never lost this bowl game, it's it's at FAU, yeah. a CUSA member, and I believe uh, they're 5-0, and 6-0 and in this bowl at conference. Uh, but I think we're going to get points out of Zappi in that, that Western Kentucky offense. I think breaking Joe Burrow's 60-touchdown uh, mark is on the list. I think breaking B.J. Simon's career uh, single season yardage number is on the list. He is about uh, 300 yards short of that. So I think we'll get that. Um, and, and this just becomes one giant flex for the Western Kentucky program uh, and Appalachian state, who's very good uh, can get in there and score points and steal the bowl game outright. But again, don't care who wins. Just give me lots of points. It's 11 AM uh, in South Florida on a Saturday morning. So the one thing that we can be confident in as confident as you can be in South Florida weather is that the rain will probably stay away throughout the contest because uh, typically you don't get those showers until the early to mid-afternoon. So since it's such an early uh, kickoff and Mother Nature should stay away, I like points. Give me all of them. I think we reached 70, and I think the total was in the 67.5 range. So high side here. Now, I've been to this ball game a few times here, uh, Brian, and every year they've had it at FAU, it's a blowout. It's double digits. Whoever wins, wins by double digits. It, I, do you think we've got at least a little bit closer matchup set up here? Well, Weismaker seems to think so, as they've got a lower spread than the other two. Uh, and, and I could agree a little bit. Uh, Dave made a good point about not knowing who's going to play here. We're taping this on Tuesday. Um for others, other sports coming in, the Browns have had eight guys come down with COVID. Mm. Uh, the Carolina hockey team game is canceled tonight because of COVID. This new strain of COVID is going to make these games even harder to handicap ahead of time. Normally, I know guys who line up as soon as these lines come out and just start hitting them. I didn't do that at all this year because you don't know who's going to play. Same here. And that is a concern Same here, here Brian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've, we've, got, we've got two guys, uh, two teams here. Uh, somewhat of a rarity. They entered their bowl game both off of losses. Appalachian State loses to Lafayette, and Western Kentucky loses to uh, UTSA. Um, both teams have scored, no doubt about it. But there's only one team that plays defense. That's Appalachian State. When you take a look at uh, strength of schedule, they're pretty even, so you can get a lot of uh, confidence out of the numbers. And Appalachian State has the defense. Western Kentucky doesn't stop anybody. I think they're more more inclined to just try to put up as many points as possible and get back on the field offensively. Uh, so I, I, I don't have a problem with the total in this game, but if it comes down to who needs to make a stop at the end of the game, and the line's telling you the game should be close, I'll take Appalachia State. Appalachia State's got the better defense. I think they win this game. All right, there you go, guys. That's uh, that's going to be an interesting one, too. FAU, the Boca Raton Bowl. We got one more we're going to break down for you. 
And I believe we're going to head to Albuquerque here, Robert. Yep. The New Mexico Bowl. There we're going to feature UTEP and Fresno State. And Fresno State opened up as a big favorite here, 13 and a half with a uh, opening total of 51. This one, too, going to be on Saturday, 2.15 Eastern time. Uh, Tip-off here. And uh, Tony Mejia, I'll come to you. Changes. Uh, this is not going to be, I guess, the same Bulldogs team here that we might have uh, gotten used to this year. How do you uh, break this game down? No, how juicy was that? Uh, Hayner, Jake Hayner, the quarterback for Fresno, says, all right, I think I'm going to go to Washington to, to with <laughs> Kalen DeBoer and my offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb, and gets completely, uh, you know, just called a traitor uh, and uh, just a victim of social media bullying. And then says, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to stay with Fresno State and not quit on my teammates, and he'll be the quarterback for this bowl game. So that's very interesting, and I, I think it helped that Jeff Tedford, who recruited him when he originally transferred in from Seattle, uh, is back in the in, in the driver's seat for Fresno State. So that'll be interesting. And that, to me, I think, provides some level of continuity that is necessary uh, in a bowl situation where that's really a, a major key. You know, you want to kind of try to at least get some semblance of continuity from what you saw late in the season to where we are when you fast forward weeks in advance and guys have transferred out and lost interest and whatnot and stopped working out. Uh, but in this case, I think uh, most of Fresno State re returns engaged, and they're playing a UTEP squad that really played wonderfully to start the season. It was a great uh, redemption story for UTEP, who I believe had won something like four games in five years, uh, and this season had that beat by uh, you know, mid-October uh, and obviously makes a bowl. Uh, but they did lose four of their last five. Their best wins are Old Dominion, Rice, and Southern Miss. You know, not really solid competition. They played some teams tough, um, and they do have a, a nice front seven. So their their defense is legitimate, uh, and they they have a, a very solid receiver. Especially the, the metrics bear that out. And Jacob Cowing, um, th their quarterback, has a gun for an arm, but you know lacks touch. Uh, so maybe they'll they'll give uh, Fresno a fight for a couple of quarters. But I think talent wins out here. So I'm laying the points if I'm playing this game and riding the Fresno State Bulldogs. First bowl game since 2014. I mean, this UTEP story is a pretty cool one here this year, uh, Brian. Really an amazing turnaround. Uh, you give them a shot here against Fresno State. Well, you know, somebody will be excited to get, get to this game. and That'll be the UTEP players. Uh, I'm rooting for UTEP. I, they started the season. I made some nice money on them. And then, as was pointed out, uh, in retrospect, when the teams they beat, maybe they weren't very good. But you know, they're coming to enjoy this time, and uh, good for them. It's been a long time since they've been to a ball game. Um, from a strength of schedule standpoint, they rank 136, Fresno 84. Uh, Fresno is a lot better team. You can see that in just, you know, the point differentials, um, yards differentials. Fresno is a better team here. Uh, but does do they have the same motivation as UTEP has? And if you ask me, the one, the one thing you want to look at, when you're betting on the ball games is motivation. Uh, we've seen so many times a team that is up for the national championship, all of a sudden they get knocked off, they go to a bowl game, and then they don't even show up and the other team beats them, and then they, they, that's all they brag about all offseason. Uh, Fresno's a better team here. Fresno should cover the spread if both these teams have the equal motivation. I don't think they do. I think UTEP has more motivation here. That said, uh, the line's not quite there for me to be able to play UTEP, but that's a side I'm looking at. Is motivation enough for you, Dave, in this one with UTEP? Probably not. I mean, Fresno State's a lot better team. But I'll give you some negatives on Fresno. Kalen DeBoer's not there. He's going to Washington. The offensive coordinator is Ryan Grubb. He's going to Seattle. Uh, the Hayner thing is really... It's kind of comical because, as you know, as was mentioned already, first he says he's going to go with the board of Washington. Then he says, well, I changed my mind. I'm going to stay at Fresno. The guy who's running a team here for this game is uh, Lee Marks, who's the running back coach. And he's refused, at least as of right now. I haven't checked this morning. But uh, as of yesterday, he hadn't, re he hadn't committed to Hayner playing at quarterback. Uh, <laughs> He says all three quarterbacks are going to be on the depth shot. Logan Fife and Jalen Henderson are a couple of freshmen. And we might not know until kickoff 
what's going to happen as far as that goes. I, I Again, this is, you're going to hear this a lot from me in these bowl games. I normally like to play a lot of bowl games because you've got a lot of time to handicap them, get great information. But there's so much crazy stuff going on with COVID, opt-outs, and this situation. I, I don't know what to do. I can tell you this. UTEP is probably going to have the crowd. Uh, the game's in Albuquerque. That's uh, that's a, a better trip for El Paso. They haven't won a bowl since I was 14 years old, and I'm 68. So I think they're going to be motivated. They're, the problem is they're not good. They're, they're just not good. And, and like Brian, I made a lot of money with UTEP early on and got off, got off at the right time, by the way. Um, so I, you know, I like this, the way this team's overachieved, but they're, they're not as good as Fresno state. If I had to play the game, I take UTEP. I think it's a more fluid situation at this point, but I, I think I'm going to be sitting this one out. Well, they both have one thing in common. They both got blown out by Boise state this year. So there's always that guys. Uh, there are four games, uh, guys coming up here between Friday and Saturday, those four bowl games we just broke down. So let's go around the horn here quick and see if there's one of these. Maybe you guys like a little bit more than the other. So, Tony Mejia, I'll come to you first. Is there between the Bahamas, Cure, Boca Raton, New Mexico, are you leaning maybe one way or the other here? Again, I, I think we'll get a ton of points in Boca. So we'll see Western Kentucky and Appalachian State put on a good show early in the morning. Uh, I expect uh, the 70-point barrier to be broken. And I think uh, it's at 68 and a half. It'll probably rise uh, once uh, you know all the, the, the betting money that will go in on the over. Nobody likes to bet unders. Uh, so get in while you can. Just, uh, you know, I don't think there's any fear in terms of Zappy backing out. So uh, from that standpoint, unless uh, there's some virus breakout in, in this uh, bowl game, I think uh, both, both teams show up and they'll score points. Back to you. All right. Expecting some points in the Boca Raton Bowl. How about it, Bri? One of these you're leaning towards a little more than any other? Yeah, I'm not enamored with any of them, as you could probably tell. But uh, Appalachia State's got the best defense in that game, and uh, I'll, I'll take them at a small number. All right, leaning that way. How about it, Dave? Which one of these might, might you be leaning toward? I, I think that I think Northern Illinois might have accomplished all they wanted to accomplish, and this is just a vacation for them. I think the fact that Coastal Carolina lost this bowl game last year and the fact they did not play well at the end of the season probably has them pretty focused here. And they are the better football team with a dynamic quarterback in Grayson McCall, who apparently is now back at full health. I'm going to go with Coastal Carolina. I think this one might be kind of a wipeout. All right. Looking for their first bowl victory in that one. There you got it, guys. And don't forget, of course, Tony Mejia, Brian Leonard, Dave Kogan, Full bowl packages are available right now, guys, over at wagertalk.com. Visit Tony Mejia. Visit Brian Leonard, of course. Visit Dave Koken. They are ready to go here this bowl season, and not just this bowl season, but obviously tonight, whether it be college basketball, the NBA, NHL, you name it, across the spectrum, these guys have got you covered. Visit them at wagertalk.com. In the meantime, hit that bell in the upper right-hand corner. Come back and join us again tomorrow. And, uh, of course, we'll break down another four bowl games for you here, getting you ready, of course, for the college football playoff and eventual national championship. And on behalf of Tony Mejia, Dave Kogan, Brian Leonard, guys, we appreciate it hanging out with us. In the meantime, best of luck with your plays here tonight. We'll talk to you again soon. Founded in 1957, The Gold Sheet is the country's longest running sports betting newsletter. Each week, The Gold Sheet team delivers analysis on NFL and college football games, along with NBA and college basketball matchups. The Gold Sheet maintains in-depth point spread and results logs, giving sports bettors and enthusiasts the insights needed to maximize their wagers. For over 60 years, Gold Sheet readers have received key releases based on power rankings on all teams. And for the first time ever, you can now get these selections exclusively at goldsheet.com, wagertalk.com, and sportsmemo.com.